Hello and welcome back to our Melee AI tutorial series. In the previous episode we started work on our attack animation for our enemy here, so every 4 seconds we set up heal or attack. Um, it doesn't do anything else, it doesn't run towards you and attack or anything like that. Um, so what we're doing in this episode is setting up the AI part of him attacking you. Um, so it's him running up to you, whacking you, and then carrying on. So um, we'll probably break this up into a couple more, a couple of videos because there's quite a lot to it. Um, but um, let's see how far we get. So uh, for this, previously we made this enumerator, this AI state numerator. So I've got holding, attacking, and recovering. So we've done holding. Um, previously but we want to work on the attacking part and then use this enumerator to tell it which branch on the AI, AI tree to go down. So let's go to our behavior tree and this is what we previously had set up and this handles the movement around and towards the player. So I'm just going to move this to the side a little bit and we're going to use a blackboard decorator on this movement node here and this will Ch uh, will basically t be a gate telling it to only go down it if the enumerator is on the correct state. So I'm going to go to my blackboard and go new key and we'll choose the enum, enumerator. Choose this and we're going to call this one AI state. And if you go over to the right hand side details, you can see the key type set to enumerator and you can expand that open and you can see which enumerator type you want to assign to it. And if you click on there, you can find your AI state. And click save. Go back to my behavior tree. I can go to movement here and right click and do add decorator and do a blackboard check. And this is going to check that a certain blackboard key is set to the correct um, enumerator. So with that one selected or that decorator selected, go to the right hand side and you'll see blackboard key. Change that to AI state. And you want to change that to the key value of um, holding. Okay, so when it's equal to holding, it will do this. Okay, now if he is going to attack mode, we want a different branch handling that. Okay, so this is a, a decorator. A decorator is like a gate. So if that gate is closed because that is not true, then it, this one will fail and then go back up and then choose the next one. Because this is a selector, meaning that if this one fails, it will choose the next one on the list. So let's go down and do another sequence here. And I'm going to immediately put that decorator on it again. So add decorator, blackboard, click on it, and then go to the right hand side, blackboard key, change it to AI state. And this time the key value you want is attacking. And we're going to rename our sequence here to attack. Okay, so the attacking one's a bit simpler than this one. Uh, because, uh, well, it's attacking, he's only going to do one or two things. He's going to run towards the player whilst attacking. Um, now, if you've got a, uh, a an animation which is root motion, you don't have to do a move two because the root motion will take the thing forwards and handle that for you. But in this case, we don't have it. We have a locked animation uh, on the on the root. So we need to move the AI towards the player whilst attacking. So... Um, for that, we need to set up our um, parallel, which we've done here earlier. We're going to do another parallel here. Um, we're going to do parallel. And on the parallel, we're going to tell it to move to, so similar to here, um, whilst um, attacking. Okay. And now this one will run in the background whilst this one is active. So it's up to you which way around you do this. Um, I think what might be best is we do the attack on the main task here and the move to here. So that means he only attacks once and move to will carry on going whilst he is um, uh, whilst he's attacking. So let's have a look what we've got to do here. So we need to copy a lot of this what we've got here. So we've got find player location, which we want. Um, we're going to take that take the walk speed task and focus target. We'll take all this, take the move to, we'll take all that as well, and we'll copy that over and paste that down here. So the first part of the task, uh, the attack sequence is gonna find the player, is gonna change his walk speed, which we can customize. So if we wanted to move faster towards the player, we can do. So if I change the walk speed here to say 800, 
it'll move faster towards the player. Focus target, we'll make sure it's just focusing still on the on its target. And the move to is going to go to our parallel here, but this time it's going to go into the secondary one, which is this grey one here. So he'll carry on moving towards the player whilst uh, 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 this is doing its thing, which is going to be the attack task. So let's do an attack task here. So new task, BT task blueprint base. And I'm going to immediately go in, change the name of this one, so it makes a bit more sense. So we're going to attack target. Back into that task, we'll go in and we'll do our execute, receive execute AI, which starts off the task. And from there, we can then do uh, what we kind of did with the AI controller. Uh, we're going to tell the controller to attack the pawn, attack the target. Um, you can go straight to the pawn if you like, but I prefer to go the, the method of uh, if we say that the controller is the input and the mesh is the output, it makes it a lot easier to keep in your head that way. Um, so I'm just going to disconnect my timer that I set up on my AI controller that we did last time. So I'm going to take that aside there. And we'll leave it as pawn attack. So I'm going to go into my enemy B, uh, no, uh, my attack target task. Here it is. And we're looking at owner controller here. And we're going to cast to our enemy AI controller. From there, uh, we're going to take the as enemy AI and take it to attack, uh, pawn attack. And then from there, we're going to do a finish execute a success okay and hit compile so this task handles just simply all it's going to do is get hold of the controller tell it to call that function on the controller which is the pawn attack and then just tell that the task was successful so that's calling this which is then calling the me the, me the meshes attack uh, code Okay, so let's go back to our behavior tree and let's add our attack to this primary path on our simple parallel. And we've got attack target. Hit save and we are kind of done here. So we've got two t uh, branches. We've got the holding branch and we've got the attacking branch. Now we need to determine which one is going to be playing first and how they're going to switch. So this is going to be handled on the AI controller. So on the AI controller, on begin play over here, I'm going to tell its current state on my variables. If you haven't really got this, make sure you have this by clicking on new variable and then choosing AI state. I uh, believe we've done it in the previous episode, so make sure that is there. And by default, it says holding. Okay, so from there, we're going to drag this out and choose get. And then we're going to also right click and get blackboard. From get blackboard, we're going to set value as enum. And this is going to set that blackboard value on our behavior tree to start off with. So my blackboard value is called AI state. So we want to make sure that matches here. So key name, we're going to make literal. And we're going to type that name in here, exactly how it appears in your blackboard. And finally, the enum value is going to be that verbal which we have there. And hit compile. So at the start, when it's on begin play, this controller is going to tell the blackboard to set the AI state blackboard to the correct one. Okay, with that done, we can go down to. Ooh. Okay, with that done, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to tell this to. Uh, we'll actually do that timer again. For, uh, say just for so testing purposes here and we'll do another four seconds looping and this time we're going to do another custom event here and we call it test and the test is going to simply just change our uh, current state to this and change this set value as enum here so I'm going to copy this over like so and I'm going to change my current state here to set Can actually delete that one there and hook up this pin here 
and then change that to attacking. So every four seconds, it's going to change the state to attacking, which will trigger uh, the behavior tree to go down this branch instead. So the last thing we need to do is set it to recover, which tells it to return back to our movement. So quite simply, I'm going to make a new task here. So PT task blueprint base, and I'm going to rename it straight away. And we're going to uh, reset, ooh, reset state. And in here, we're going to do execute AI. And from here, we're going to get the controller object again. And we're going to chain, go uh, cast to. Actually, no, we don't. We don't need to do that. We can just go straight to the uh, the blackboard. So the blackboard here. Actually, we should change it. My bad. Let's change it. So cast to anime AI, and let's change the state here. Set current state. Oh, to holding, and then we're going to um, set blackboard value as enum. And the key we want to change is going to come from a Blackboard key selector, which will be a variable over here. So I'm going to do bb underscore uh, state. And the type for this is a Blackboard key selector. Make sure you tick the eyeball to make it public and editable. Plug that into key, and the value is going to be that value there. And then things off with a finish execute. make sure you tick success that's quite important and then go back to the behavior tree and at the end of this so after the parallel we're going to do reset state make sure your bb state is set to the correct key which is ai state okay so that's going to reset the ai state in the, in the blackboard back to movie uh, back to holding which will allow it to do the movement branch instead of the attack branch then after four seconds, the AI controller will tick this on again and change the blackboard value again. So let's go and test this out. So after four seconds, he should play his attack animation. There you go. So we've got the attack animation. Now we want him to move towards the player a bit better because he's not really moving towards the player. So this may have something to do with my find player location task because I think we've done it as, oh no, that should be correct. Yeah, let's have a look back on our thing and let's have a look where we've gone wrong on that. So I've got move to uh, target location. Right, so here's what I've changed, the acceptable radius. Let's change this way down. So I'm gonna change this to the default actually. So I can actually delete this and just put in move to and leave it as default. And we're gonna to to observe the blackboard value. So with the player moves, they move uh, along with the player. Uh, if you want the player to be able to dodge uh, a lot more easily, you can turn this off and makes it a bit easier to dodge. Um, we'll see how this works. We can tweak this as we need to. Okay, so we've got target location set, that's set, that's set, that's all good. Let's now test that out and see if the movement towards the player works a bit better. Still not going too long. It's, um, it seems to be a bit del um, too quick. The attack animation happens too quick for the movement to hit a trigger, I think. So let's have a look at if we can improve that. So what I'm going to do here, rather than doing a simple parallel, relying on this move to here, we're going to actually put a move to at the start here before the parallel. And this move to, we're going to change the acceptable radius here to something like 50. And let's see how that works. So he runs up to me, and after four seconds, he should run towards me and attack me. Cool. Okay, so we've got a simple setup here where he'll just hover around me and then attack me after four seconds. Now, the trick towards these systems is that um, when you've got multiple AIs, you have a, another sort of AI controller that's sort of controlling the whole horde of enemies. And that thing is directing which one should be attacking next. Because you don't want them all attacking at the same time. You want to sort of take turns. So, 
in the next episode, that's what we're going to start working on. Start working towards our AI director to direct the action inside our game. Uh, after all, if everyone is attacking at the same time, the game's not fun, and it's well, it's not fun. No one would want to play it. So we want to make sure we are doing that turn-taking um, system. And what we can do eventually is adding in um, prioritization. So enemies that are uh, in better positions to attack the enemy, uh, attack the player, will get higher priority when getting decided upon which one should attack the player and when. So join us in the next episode where we'll start working towards our creation of our AI director. If you like this video and you want to see the rest of the, uh, if you want to see the next episode right now. You can head to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lely, where a donation of just $1 will get access to all those videos plus many more. If you like what I do and you yet to subscribe to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and uh, so you keep track of everything I'm doing each week. If you want to watch that next part right now, you can head to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lely, where a donation of just $1 will get access to all those videos plus many more. Thank you to all my patrons for their continued support. Um, it, the gratitude is not enough, so thank you, thank, thank you so much. If you uh, have any suggestions for future content or have any questions about this content, please leave a comment below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. Um, otherwise, thank you all and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.